And welcome to the Loveland Report and the Lone Ranger Show. I am Cleve Loveland, Central Florida's voice of real estate. And alongside Bruce Woodburn, bringing you all of your real estate and mortgage news, what's going on in Central Florida, what's going on in the housing market around the state, around the country, what you can believe, what you can dismiss from the talking heads you see on all those different networks on TV. We will give you the real stats on what's going on in Central Florida. And, and Bruce, I want to jump right in. Um, right now we're still dealing with what I'm seeing people freak out about and people are calling me because they need help is coordinating the process of selling and buying because you've got to have you basically got to be either qualified to buy without selling or you've got to um, get a lease back on your house and a lot of realtors don't even know how to do that well you can get a lease on your house and you can offset the mortgage so for instance uh, a lender is going to use 75% of the gross I'm lease. About, well, I'm talking about just the, the seller being able to stay a little bit after closing. Oh, so you're talking yeah. about the buyer. Because you got to be able to hunt. Buying a home, but giving the seller some leeway to, to stay in the house. Because what that does is effectively give the seller another two to three months to shop for a house from the time they start their house listed up to closing and maybe a month or so So afterwards. guidelines are for, for mortgages that if a buyer buys a home as a primary residence, they must move into the home within 60 days Mm -hmm. so you can do up to two months but it's it's hard for some people to qualify without selling uh, for both homes and some people don't want to do that but this what i've done is arrange this when i've get when i'm getting 20 offers and if i tell somebody that all right the seller needs to stay for a couple weeks after closing um for x amount of rent or no rent i can negotiate that i'm an expert negotiator i do this all the time but what that does is giving them that extra ease of mind because getting an offer through contingent on a home closing, in a normal market, that'd be okay. But things haven't been normal since um, the old Wuhan lab messed us up about two years ago. <laughs> yes, it they have. So how are we doing on the rates this week? Well, you're starting to see rates pop up again. We saw some uh, action on Tuesday. Wednesday was rocky. Uh, it's been it, – uh, we're, listen, here's the reality of it. You know, we promised no fake news, and I know – I hear these ads out there that, you know, interest rates are at record lows. Here's the thing. They're at record lows compared to what they might have been 15 years ago, but they're not at record lows from what they were two months ago, two weeks ago even. So we're already seeing rates creeping up. They're already in the fours. They're going to be hitting the fives. We expect that probably by mid-year we'll be in the 6% range for sure. So look at, we're already in the, in the, uh, and you can still get rates in the threes if you have really good credit. I'm seeing a lot more people buy down rates today than they ever have. But here's the fact. Rates are up by about a point and a half yeah. from where they were just two months ago. Yeah. The Fed hasn't even raised the Fed rate yet. Yeah. When the Fed raises the Fed rate a quarter point, maybe a half a point, they're likely going to do that three times. We already know it's going to happen. So do you if you... If you think rates are high now, then buy now because they're going to get worse in a, in a few yeah. more days. And every day, every day I come in, the bond market's off by 20, the bond market's off by 19. Bond mar- Listen, when, uh, Tuesday, I think we lost 60 points in the bond market. In one day. That's a, that's over a half a point to the discount point in one day. Yeah. So you can't look at, and listen, that's not a cross country thing. That's not a rocket thing. That's not a Bank of America thing. It's across the board. It's what the market's doing, and that's what mortgage-backed securities are doing. So expect to go up. But here's something that I think is important. When, you, when you're talking about rates, if rates go up by 1% on a $350,000 house, it's going to cost you $350 more. Yep. If the house goes up $50,000... That's three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. So that's seven hundred and fifty dollars a month more for the exact same house. A if year you from now. wait, yeah. If you wait, not yeah. even not even a year from now, yeah. because last year you would have made a hundred grand, and now you're paying seven hundred and fifty dollars a month for the same payment. But if you watch the news this morning, it was all over the news that housing prices or housing is rock solid, and no end in sight on slowing down. That's the news. And, and I think nationwide, I've got some numbers here from the National Association of Realtors talking about how you know, nationwide they're projecting home prices only up 3% around the country. So this, okay. and so, But Central Florida, I think we're still going to be in the double digits 
on that. And it's just important that people get out there. What I have, what I, what, what I feel is a shame is when I get offers from somebody and they, they've got a pleading, nice little letter from the seller, and it looks like a really cute, nice family. And they're like, this is the 17th home they made an offer on. I'm like, well, I think after the fifth, they should have changed changed horses and, and gotten another realtor knows how to write an offer. Or another because lender that, offer, that can help them land the deal. That, that too. And, and talk about how you fast track people and you make that honor call because I don't have any other lenders in town doing that. But when, and also not making relevant offers, you know, knowing the market and saying, wow, this house is priced right. Let's go in 5% above list. Let's go in 20,000 over list. And that's what the buyers are having to do. But I just had one. We didn't go in at list because the house had been on the market for 60 days at the same so, price and, and all the comps. I hear you. You've got to be able to read the market. And I just. And read that I listing. Could, I could go on and on. I could go on and on about inexperienced people out there. Not knowing how to price. Well, while you go on and on, I want you to know what Cleve's phone number is, and that is 407-352-8118. That's 407-352-8118. Or Loveland, is it CleveLoveland.com? LovelandTeam.com? Either one. Loveland I mean, you Report. have so com. many websites. I, I got can't them even all back from the Russians. They, okay. they, they finally you know, and, hacked my account. Now I got them back. And if you'd like to call the loan arranger, my direct phone number is 407 407- Two five zero nine one four 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 zero seven two five zero nine one four four or we bring you home dot com. That's we bring you home dot com. So we talked about housing prices going up, and you just said that nationally they're predicted to go up three percent. Yeah. Right. So I want to just put this in perspective for people because a lot of people that haven't bought yet think that's good. A lot of people that have bought think that's not enough. But, you know, that is the national average yeah. over the long haul. Yeah. But I want to put this in perspective. If you put, if you bought a house and you put down 3.5% down payment, yep. okay, FHA or minimum down conventional loan, and that house went up by 3% in one year, you made an 86% return on your investment. Yeah. With 3% down. And you weren't three paying and a half. rent. That's the thing. You, you weren't paying rent. That's the main thing, too. It, listen, I don't care what interest rates are doing. They can go up. It doesn't matter as long as housing prices housing continue to go sell, up. Yeah. Right? So we want to be in the market. There is no such thing as a rich renter. I've never met a poor land baron. I just have never met one before. And you look back in history and you go, wow, you're looking back in history. What did that person did? A- owned land. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. You don't get rich by renting from other people. It doesn't happen. Yep. And then also I, I love our, our, our leapfrog process where we talk about just getting one home and then that's your primary. Yep. And within a year or two, Move up again. Yep. Keep that one. And keep that one. Don't keep sell that. it. You don't have to save the 20%. You've nope. got a great primary Put interest rate on that. Put 5% down on your next one. And, and it's just a great process that I wish I'd known when I bought my first house at 27. And we will teach you how to do that, how to put minimum down by multiple properties. I'll show you how to own five properties well within a 20-year period of time. All of them paid off free and clear. You got about 2.1 to 3.5 million dollars in free and clear property if they only increase by 3% per year. Yeah. Only increase by 3% per rents year. Rents are going up really high and this is going to level off the next couple of years, but rents are going up really high and like I talk about it all the time and Florida is moving up from number 20th most ex- most expensive state in the union. I think we're going to end up about number 15. Yeah, well our, you could be right. People are just finally figuring out our weather's better, our taxes are less, our governor's great. COVID amplified the situation. It wasn't anything new. It just made it move faster. Yeah, and, and here's another thing. The, the numbers came out for the 10 best cities to live in in America. Now, I'm not talking about in Florida. I'm talking about in the entire country. Number one, Tampa. Yep. Number two, Jacksonville. Number nine, Central Florida, Orlando area. Yeah, and it's just, it's just you, we are less expensive than the rest of the country for the most and part. And we're a desirable place to live. You got everything you want. You're 45 to 55 minutes from a beach in any what's, direction. What's your number, Bruce? 407 250 That's 407 250 Or my website is webringyouhome.com. It's webringyouhome.com. Cleve, what's your number? Four zero seven three five two eight one one eight. If you want to talk, I just talked to a bunch of people last night, Bruce. We had our 
our client movie night and just talk to them. And some people are asking, well, I'm not ready to move for about another six to 12 months. I said, I can still come over and show you what to do and what not to do. So it, it's just this person was wondering about doing a new roof. I'm like, yeah, we're probably going to need to do that. It's more than 15 years old. You're going to have to do it. Then he asked about redoing his kitchen. I'm like, nope, probably not going to need to do that. Flooring, paint. I mean, typically I've got a 50-point staging checklist. Typically on a five, let's say it's a $500,000 house, anywhere from anywhere three to 500000 we're spending about 2 to 3% on the home. Now, this depends on how well you've taken care of it, how much renovations you have done, how old is the home, things like that. But usually you're going to spend a little bit on, on prepping. But beyond that, above 2 or 3%, you're, it's, not, it's usually not worth it. Save that no. for the next house. No, not unless you have something that people are just going to be disgusted by when you walk into your home. Now, as these prices rise, Bruce, what I want to ask you about, you know, rates have ticked up. As these prices rise, are the jumbo rates rising too? If somebody's well, buying a house, everything's rising. Whenever rates go up, they're all going to go up with it. But my jumbo rates, I mean, I, I, I priced a, uh, two point three million dollar transaction the other day that was still in the mid threes and was phenomenal, thirty year fixed rate. So are they in the high twos and low threes anymore? Not generally. And I believe me, don't get caught up on these mortgage companies that are starting to push adjustable rates. I'm not against adjustable rates. I haven't rates. seen that yet, but they're probably... Oh, my yeah. God, they're already coming out of the oh, woodwork. Oh, wow, that's funny. They're already coming out of the woodwork. It's crazy It's crazy how people have forgotten what happened in 2007 and 8 and 9. They've just absolutely forgotten. They And they start to get really creative. I've heard some realtors going, oh, I heard this mortgage company's doing this. I'm like, that's frightening. Right, but they're they're doing some crazy stuff. Don't get caught up in it. Stay with tried and true people that came to me in two thousand six, five, six, seven. That went, oh, I want the monthly adjustable with no PMI and no yeah. income, and it adjusts every month because I'm not going to keep it that long, and I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to do this, or my income's going to go jump two percent. Well, then. The bottom fell out of the market, yeah, yeah. and then they all went bankrupt and lost their homes. Yep. So look at fixed rates. I I move into adjustable rates when we start hitting the eights and nines. Yeah. Then you can do an adjustable yeah. rate until we hit seven and well, a half. You and I've been through four, talk three or four slowdowns, speed ups. That's what we've been through in thirty years. You've got thirty-three oh, gosh, years, yes, yeah. at least. At I got, least. I got a little note here, Bruce. How much time we got? Well, we've got about uh, two two minutes. All right. I want to talk here about. It's funny. I get I get calls. Believe it or not. And I'll get somebody calling me, go, I need your foreclosure list. And I'm like, there what aren't any. And I'm looking at the stats right here. Like right now in Central Florida. How many we got? This one week, there was only uh, active listings. There was eight foreclosures. In the entire? In, in Central Florida. In this, Central this is Florida. a four-county area right here for this week. And, and it's like, in this one week, zero sold. There's only one. There's only six short sales. So our distressed properties are at a very, at the very least to say, a minimum. The only so. way anybody should go into foreclosure right now is if you're dead, yeah. <laughs> right? If you're dead yeah. and you don't have anybody to sell yeah. the house and the bank took the house over. Because even if somebody died and you inherited the house, right now, it would almost be impossible not to have equity unless you closed on a 100% VA loan last month. You probably still have money in yeah. equity in yep. it. So it makes no sense that somebody would foreclose. But you know what? I still see people taking advantage of the whole COVID thing. They went into loan modification. They haven't made a payment. Deferred in two principal. Years. They haven't yeah. made a payment in two years. And they think that they're beating the system. These people, in my opinion, if you're listening to me, you're foolish. I'm just going to say yeah, it out yeah. loud. You are foolish. Yep. Don't. Don't take advantage of things. Be fair. Be an American. Pay your bills on time. Keep your credit in good shape. Do the right thing. Just because it's a bank doesn't mean you can screw them. Listen, I don't even like banks. I've been in the mortgage business my whole life. I've worked with banks my whole life. I don't even like banks, but I don't screw anybody. Don't screw the government, even though they'll probably screw you. Don't be disrespectful and dishonest about anything you will be in good shape if you always just do the right thing don't you agree with that yeah 407-250-9144 for the right thing 407-250-9144 i'm the loan arranger cross country mortgage we bring you home.com cleve loveland he can be reached at 407 407- 
352-8118 or lovelandreport.com. We will be back in five minutes with more of the Loveland Report and the Lone Ranger Radio Show. Stay tuned. Level looks a lot less. Awesome.